I know that you are a great lover of crime documentaries, crime novels, real true crime books. Yes. And you've had some, you've had some in interactions, some, some brushes with uh, danger recently. Y well, yes. Uh, I don't, you know, I don't want crime to happen to me, but I'm a... <laughs> and that's why I'm running for mayor. <laughs> I don't want crime to happen to me. I like... I love true crime and uh, have been a little obsessed with it. I went on a date once with a wonderful young lady who halfway through the date revealed that her dad had worked on the Joan Benet case. And I was just like, whoa. And then I asked her a thousand questions about Joan Benet and we didn't have a second date. Um, but I have always wanted to solve a crime. And uh, I woke up uh, a couple months ago. I was on a break after a lot of touring and I went outside my house in Los Angeles in my car uh, well, my car was shut. I went inside, and it had been rummaged through. Someone had been in there, and they left a hat. They left a baseball cap on the, on the passenger side seat. So I went, I go, aha! And my car had been broken into before, so I go, this time, we, we got a break in the case. So I go inside, and I got my surgical gloves, and I come back out, and I, I had a Ziploc bag, and I had my surgical gloves, and I grabbed it just so, you know, not tainted. <laughs> And I put it in the Ziploc bag, and then I remembered that during the OJ case, that Dennis Fong, you know, that guy, he, he ruined some of the DNA because it got too warm outside. So I put it in the refrigerator. So I take the hat yeah. and the bag. I go, I'm no Dennis Fong. I put it in the fridge, mm -hmm. and then, then I called the authorities. And then I waited in front of my house like this, because I was like, fellas, don't worry. It's under control. Well, you've pretty much done all the work for oh, that. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I've done the sleuthing and the forensics already, <laughs> and they're safely in my crisper drawer. So they show up and they go, what's the situation? I go, someone broke into my car. And they said, did they break a window? And I said, no, I leave my car unlocked. <laughs> because people used to break in and break the window, so now I leave it unlocked. And they said, what did they take? I said, I have no idea if they took anything, because I have no idea what's in my car. <laughs> Uh, you know, I'll find, like, my wife's glasses sometimes and wear them if it's sunny. So I have no, I just, it's just a scavenger hunt in there. Um, they said, why haven't you ever called us before? And I said, because now we have a break in the case. <laughs> and I led these two LAPD officers in my house to the refrigerator. <laughs> and I opened it up and I took out the hat and I was like, he left his hat in the car. And they were like, okay. And I was like, so you can run that through CODIS. <laughs> Uh, you can run that and maybe you can get a hit on who it is. They were like, why would we run it through CODIS? And I was like, because he committed a crime. They were like, barely. <laughs> they were like, one, he didn't break and enter because you left your car open. Yeah. Two, he stole nothing. Maybe we have him for trespassing. Yeah. But like, we don't do a national DNA yeah. search. But you I said, can frame it as the guy gave you a hat. That is an interesting way to look at it. Real glass half full type guy. <laughs> Me, some guy touched my car and I'm gonna nail him because of the DNA. But I said to them, you know, like, uh, you know, this can escalate, you know, today it's a car, tomorrow it's an escalator, he escalates. And so, but I said, I was like, but you know, Manson, and I don't like to speak ill of the dead, but he was a lousy guy, right? <laughs> He would creepy crawl around, that's his term, yeah. people's houses and stuff, and he gradually, <laughs> he, he was up to no good. So I said, I said, I understand that, but what if this guy escalates? Don't you want his DNA on file? And they're like, what file? What are you talking about? And uh, they're like, the only way we would need a DNA profile is if, and then I said, if he murders somebody. And then I remembered that sometimes serial killers like to help the police, you know? <laughs> And this whole time I've been talking about this guy in the third person, like, he's quite cunning, but he will be back. <laughs> and then my friend had had her car broken into down the street, and I said, you should go uh, ask her, because her car was also broken into. And they said, was anything stolen from hers? And I go, I don't know. Let me let her know that you're coming. And I said, the police are coming. Tell them that he stole something. <laughs> which I thought was a great way to get the hat, again, which is nice and cool in the fridge, in the national system. It turns out that that is framing someone for a crime. Oh. But I will break rules to get these guys <laughs> behind bars.
If they're watching right now, they should know you're the wrong guy to mess with. Because... Ab absolutely. You come in my RAV4 <laughs> and quickly realize I have no valuables? How dare you? And the mud on the, on the carpet? Oh, that's mine? All right. <laughs> Uh, I want to say uh, real quick, so exciting, Big Mouth is back. Yes. Um, a fantastic show. Yes. Um, created by Nick Kroll and Andrew Goldberg, and uh, it's based on their friendship, Nick, Nick and Andrews, and I get to voice uh, Andrew alongside uh, my very good friend, Nick Kroll, and, uh, who also voices the hormone monster scene there. Uh, um, it's a fantastic show. I'm so excited it's back for a second season. I'm so excited, too. And uh, it's always great to see you. Congrats on Nine.